I'm Robert Morton. I uh, was with Dave for 14 years. I started, before we went on the air, at the end of 1981, I was hired as a segment producer. Then I became the producer of the show, and then I became the executive producer of the show when we went to CBS. It was the best 14 years of my life. My favorite guest of all time was probably Kmar. Every time he came on our show, something would go wrong. Kmar always had great fuck-ups. Always. Salad through salad. All right. Huh? Did you feel it? Did you feel it? Oops. Oops. <laughs> One, two, three. Ale. Oh! Did I get you? It got stuck. We gotta do it again. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. It's like the cover of The Post, doesn't it? <laughs> there was a, an FCC ruling, if I'm not mistaken, that you couldn't have hypnotists on a show. They were afraid that the people in the audience would get hypnotized and do stupid things, so we challenged it once. And we had this guy named Marshall Silver. And Marshall Silver was this mentalist slash hypnotist. And Marshall Silver warned me, tell Dave that if he looks me in the eye, he could get hypnotized on the spot. David, okay. Let it go, relax, deeply and deeply. Let it go, let your eyelids remain closed. Keep your head down until you can relax. Just let yourself go. Marshall Silver had one line. He suspend somebody and he would say to them, stiff and rigid, stiff and rigid like a steel bar. And we just around the office would go, stiff and rigid, rigid and stiff like a steel bar. Tip your head straight back, clasp those hands together, stoop and rigid, stoop and rigid, stoop and rigid as a steel bar, David Ketcher, stoop and rigid as a steel bar, stoop and rigid as a steel bar. Come a little closer. Stiff and rigid as a steel bar. Would you? Stiff and rigid. Stop. Put those hands together, folks. There was a commercial that aired, and it was the, this old woman who said, where's the beef? The writers had this idea to come up with, we were going to choose our own catchphrase. They chose me to deliver one of the catchphrases, and I had these two twin boys. So, boys, how was school today? They pelted us with rocks and garbage. <laughs> Okay. Then that became the famous catchphrase, and I got many appearances with these boys and got paid for those appearances. Bill Wendell, God rest his soul, was our announcer for many years. Bill also had a little flatulence problem. The greatest announcer, he was a lovely guy, but ate the wrong things for lunch. In the middle of the show, we'd hear Bill <laughs> let one out. The gas would waft our way, and we'd all start laughing. During a commercial break, I said, you know, Wendell's farting and we don't know what to do. And we're just laughing. We're just reacting. And he's doing it in front of the audience, for God's sakes. So at that point, Letterman was in on the joke. What? Huh? What is it? A gas leak here in the studio? <laughs> is everything all right behind camera two? <laughs> is everything all right? We have a man in the middle of a fit of some kind. Well, what's going on? What is the conversation here? Everything all right? Is, is this the old poison gas leak drill again? No, no. And the number one highlight of our upcoming season finale, Gas Leak Kills Audience. There you go. The fourth anniversary show, NBC was giving us a tremendous budget. So Dave said, let's do a show on an airplane and shoot it in the three hours that it takes to get from New York to, let's say, Miami Beach. We shot a show on a TWA 747. We touched down, we had finished taping the show, and we just had a, a week in Miami to screw around. Advice to future producers, that's the way to do TV. You know, uh, when you need a flight attendant, here's a surefire way to get their attention. Simply attach this lower torso dummy to the inside of your window so that it appears desperately wedged in the sub-zero <laughs> upper atmosphere. Here's how it works. Excuse me. Excuse me. You don't mind if I just... There you go. See? See how that works? Now, uh, a flight attendant is sure to rest your seat and you can all 
Gary and a really good laugh. <laughs> so the staff always was prepared to be called into duty if a guest canceled, and they'd sit at the desk and Dave would interview them. I had broken up with a woman that I had dated for five years, and I had a roll of film that I had developed, and it turned out to be all pictures of her on a vacation. And Dave was just teasing me the whole time. Okay. Here's Christine on the, uh, the porch, uh -huh. wearing a bikini. <laughs> What, what is Christine doing now? Have you seen uh, her recently? She's a married woman. Oh, she's married? Yeah. yeah. Do you know the guy My she cousin. married? Uh, no, I, I know of him. I don't you know, know of him? him. Yeah. Uh, you know what Chris, he does for a living? Uh, family business. Oh, family business. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> nice guy? I've never met him. I, yeah. I hear good things about him. Okay. Uh, here's Christina in a, a private keep off sign. I, it, was a, it was a little joke at yeah. the time. I well, guess. this certainly has new meaning for you, doesn't it? Uh, this, 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 yeah. Yeah. Over the years, we developed a, a reputation for breaking the cutting edge stand-up comedians. And there are two people that I remember. The first one was Jeff Ross. Jeff came on and just radiated happiness. It was just the sheer enjoyment that you saw the performer getting that, that made it very memorable to me. This is one that my dad wrote for my mom. It's called Enough With The Bread Already. <laughs> Your smile blooms like a bright summer flower. Your hair flows down like a soft rain shower. Your eyes are like open seas, blue from coast to coast. So how come your ass looks like a truck? <laughs> Enough with the bread already. The other stand-up that was memorable was when Chappelle made his network television debut on. And we had decided at CBS that we were gonna dress nicely. So Chappelle shows up in torn jeans, and, and some ratty old t-shirt. And I said to him, I said, is that what you're gonna wear? And he goes, uh, yeah. I was wearing a four button Giorgio Armani sport coat. And I said to Chappelle, wear my jacket. He put the jacket on and it, it, it swam on him. He looks like David Byrne in Talking Heads with the big jacket. Terrorist has never taken a black hostage in the history of the world. <laughs> you will never see a black guy on the news reading one of those letters. They is treating us good. Never. It's true. You know why they don't take black hostages? Why? Because we're bad bargaining chips. <laughs> they would call up the White House, hello, we have got five black people. And we will, hello? <laughs> There was a tradition in old talk shows where people would do walk-ons. Danny Thomas was a, a performer who was famous for doing spit takes. Danny did a walk-on. Of course, we wanted him to do a spit take, which he did. Years later, when Danny Thomas passed away, I found it particularly funny that I made it to the obituary based on the walk-on. And I said something about it. He was a genius, his timing. I don't remember what it was. Anyway, it's great to be on your show. Thank you very much. Is that your nose or are you eating a banana? <laughs> I had a friendship with Barbara Streisand, of all people, and I convinced her to do a walk-on on the show. If you remember both of our shows, Dave sat to the left of the guests. It favored the guests' right side. Barbara always favored her left side. So when she did the walk-on, she insisted on coming in from stage left instead of stage right, where all the guests always came in from. I was able to get tickets to the seventh game of the Stanley Cup playoffs that, with the Rangers and the Canucks. That, but yet, yeah. I can't get Streisand tickets. I can get World Series tickets. Imagine. I can go anywhere in this country and buy tickets to a, I said, a New York Knicks play. Any place like... I just wanted to tell you to stop quetching already. Here's the <laughs> now I expect you to quetch. You got anything down front? Ah, oh, come on. My favorite all-time piece on the show, the writers came up with a character called P-Boy. It was one of these pieces that was so dumb, but P-Boy, for some reason, just struck me as, as hilarious. <laughs> Can't you see by all the great news that you spread? Everyone waits, so don't hesitate. We love it when you aim right at our head.
I was the extrovert on the staff. I always looked at it as my role to kind of be the ambassador in New York for, for the show. Dave made fun of me for eating at Orso every night. I used to see a lot of people and in my ambassadorial role, I, I would say, hey, come do the show while you're in town. I used to go out quite a lot and stay out quite late and have a lot of fun. This time I wanted to mention another element that is very special on All the right. show. And that is your producer, Robert Morton. Bob Morton. Sure. Can you imagine what it's like to produce this show? This man lives in a whirlwind of decision-making and problem-solving. I mean, who's the guy when Cher cancels? Who's the guy who calls the insect lady in the middle of the night and says, can you come in and schmoozes with guest after guest at Orso's? And then he has to decide, oh, was it the pasta pomodoro or the Greenpoint mussels or the Chablis or the Zinfandel or the, you know, the creme brulee or the tofuti? <laughs> this is the man who does it, and the I... The only man producing television today with a prison haircut. And I say that because... <laughs> Indulge my insatiable ego for one minute. I want to talk about some of the appearances that I made on the show. When I started as the producer of the show, Dave came to me and said, Morty, it gets very lonely out there. So I need somebody to just help me out so that I'm not alone out there. He said, do you mind if I often come to you on the air? And I said, no, of course not. So as a result, he used to come to me a lot. And then it kind of went into where he would make fun of me. And it helped his performance. And it, and it made the show that much better. You know, our new producer thinks he's Elvis. <laughs> I think, I wish I'd known that a couple of weeks ago. Now what do we do? Now you uh, cross back. Who are you, by the way? <laughs> our producer over there, Johnny Cash. Always nice to have. Johnny with us. And he used to be uh, a hairdresser. He worked with uh, Jose Iber, and he worked with John Peters, and now he's uh, producing this show. Art Carney, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Don Diego again. Uh, the man who invented the stand-up nap. All right, Morty. Oh, I'm sorry, Morty, come out and pick this up. It's the producer. Look, Paul, it's the producer. After a show, Dave was upset because his tie was all crumpled up. And he said to me, he says, Morty, you're right in front of me. If you see that my tie is not lined up with my belt buckle, wherever we are, stop the show. Thank you very much. Another time he brought me up on stage, he asked me to hug him. I not only hugged him, but I grabbed his ass. Nobody grabbed David Letterman's ass, unless you were Julia Roberts or whoever, I don't know. All right, Bob, come on up here. How about a hug? That is Bob favoring the old grab and thrust technique. <laughs> I haven't seen that since my army days. I don't know, I don't know. Another time we had John Claude Van Damme on the show and Van Damme was gonna demonstrate how close he could get to Letterman's face by kicking him. So Letterman said, Morty, come up here. I always enjoyed it, it was always fun and it happened a lot. I'm the cruddy guy. Thank you, sir, get your own show. Ooh. Unbelievable. Whenever a joke would fail, also I would be called on stage and was often the, uh, the one that had to take responsibility. And one night there was a top 10 vending machine backstage, but it did not work. Okay, let's try that one. Okay, let's try that one. Okay, let's try that one. All right, let's just turn the son of a bitch over. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is my good friend. I've known Bob. How long have I known you, Bob? 13 years, Dave. Bob is the producer of the program, and Bob, being the producer, that makes you responsible for every last little lousy detail. Is that right? Yes, it does, Dave. Nice going, Bob. Thank, Thank you very much. Bob Morton, ladies and gentlemen. When Madonna came on and every other word out of her mouth was a profanity, I was torn. On one hand, 
I knew that it would get tremendous publicity. But on the other hand, I knew that Dave would be pissed off. Dave was told that I told Madonna that she could say whatever she wants, and if she wants to talk dirty, she could talk dirty. And I, I never told her that. I think somebody else might have. It turned out to be one of the most famous moments of the show. So all's well that ends well. Why are you always, I, actually, I brought something uh -huh. to like make a point. All right, okay, good. You are always me on the show. <laughs> You are always this. With me on this the show. You, know. you are always with me on the show. <laughs> Where is that thing? See what you're doing? See? Do you see what you're doing? Drew Barrymore came on the show on Dave's birthday. Daniel Kellison, great, great producer. Drew mentioned to Daniel that she had a surprise that she wanted to pull on Dave. Daniel came to me and said, look, this is what Drew wants to do. Should I tell Dave she wants to surprise him? Now, we all knew that Dave did not like surprises. So I said, you know, Daniel, you're a big boy. It's in your hands, pal, whatever you think. And I was just washing my hands of the whole thing and I just threw it right back at Daniel. And I don't think he told Dave. One of my favorite pieces that I was part of was A Day in the Life of Morty. It wasn't the funniest piece. So the writers came up with a device where I promised that if a piece failed, I would jump into a tub of chocolate pudding. And if you listen carefully, Dave says to me as he gets into the chocolate pudding, it's like a weekend at your house. Oh. Here we go. Be careful. Tell us about the, the other things that we might have seen you doing uh, here at NBC. Well, Dave, you've, you've probably seen me on Meet the Press. I've, oh, no, I've, I didn't realize Yeah, I've been on that show several yet. times oh, as Buddy, oh. the studio electrician. Well, there you are right there. <laughs> well, my favorite role is, is a recurring one that's on the NBC Nightly uh -huh. News with Tom Brokaw. I play Stewie, yeah, the guy who sits well, behind the right. desk. Tyler McCary, ladies and gentlemen. Nice job, Tyler.